Hi everybody, welcome to probably the most important video I've ever made on this channel, Evaluation in Economics. Please have a pen and paper in front of you, make sure everything is written down and all the things I'm saying are written down as well. So important given the number of questions that are evaluation based in your economics exam. Given how students often find this very difficult, it's a constant improvement that students need to make, but it's a difficult thing to master. This video is there to help in that regard. So what is evaluation? Evaluation is telling the examiner where to focus attention. It's all well and good on these discuss, evaluate, assess related questions that you make your argument clear on two sides. On one side of the argument, here are my points. On the other side of the argument, here are my points. That's all well and good. But if somebody's reading that or listening to that, what good is that for them? They can't form an opinion from that. They don't really know what to think from just stating two sides of an argument. No good. So evaluation is there to steer the examiner into a certain way of thinking, to steer the examiner into focusing their attention on something. That's your job. So instead of just looking at two sides of an argument, the examiner is knowing exactly where to think, what to focus attention on. That's evaluation. Right? So very subtly, you're directing the examiner to your way of answering the question when you're evaluating. That's what evaluation is all about. So how do you do it? Well, for me, there are four key ways of evaluating and basically telling the examiner what to think. You can weigh up or you can prioritize your points. So again, you made your points on the one hand, on the other hand. So what? You know, what's the examiner thinking? What's more important than the other? Your job is to make that clear. This point is strong because this point carries significant weight because this point is a weak argument because this point, even though in theory seems quite strong, in reality is quite weak because of this. Weigh up your points, prioritize your points and back that up, justify why, using either evidence, and the evidence can come from the extract material, which is often very, very good and can be used for that purpose, or from your own head, whether it's knowledge of macroeconomic indicators of different economies in your macro exams, whether it's knowledge of cost to the government, of elasticities of demand in your micro exams, whatever, maybe it's your own knowledge. If you don't really have much own knowledge to help you here, then use the extract material. But remember, a good economist will be reading and we'll be able to use a lot of that knowledge in evaluation to weigh up and prioritize points. That for me is the best way of evaluating. The best economists will do this very nonchalantly. And don't be afraid, guys, to weigh up your points. Don't think, oh, but I'm not sure to be that definite because I might be wrong or you know, someone might disagree. Don't worry about it. There is no such thing as right or wrong in economics. As long as you justify what you're saying, you will always be rewarded. So look to do that. Another very strong thing to do is to consider time frames, time periods, to look at short run and long run considerations. I think this is especially a good thing to do in your judgment because nothing in economics is ever certain. Things change over time. Things may not happen now, may happen in the future. Things may happen now, but may not happen in the future, right? So always you're looking at time frame considerations. Now, again, you can do that in your judgment. You can do it throughout your essay. Very, very good idea. And uh, here's an example for you. Like indirect tax, you'll say, look, in the short run, it's quite ineffective in solving a given market failures because of very inelastic demand for certain goods and services. However, in the long term, because this tax generates revenue, that revenue can be used to uh, subsidize alternatives, can be used to provide alternatives, can be used to provide information, which in the long term makes demand for whatever product more price elastic. Hence, in the long term, the tax may be more effective. So, short run, long run, you can always use, whether it's micro or macro, for sure. Number three is hugely powerful. This one is great, great, great to do throughout your essay. Questioning assumptions that you made in your theoretical analysis on whichever side of the argument, whether it's on the one hand or on the other hand. You are making assumptions all the time in economics when you're analyzing, all the time. Evaluation is questioning those assumptions and saying, look, in the real world, do those assumptions actually hold? Can those assumptions break down? If they break down, does that change the analysis? Does that render the argument ineffective, weak? Very good evaluation, yeah, very good. A lot of uh, economic arguments are dependent on key assumptions. Questioning those, very strong. And lastly, considering the winners and losers, considering who are the key stakeholders that are benefiting or losing out from something happening, whether it's a policy in your question, whether it's something else, whatever. 
If there is an impact on key stakeholders, make it clear. Weigh up who's going to lose out the most, who's going to benefit the most. Is that significant? Is that a reason why a policy shouldn't go ahead? Is that a reason to consider alternatives? Very good evaluation right here as well, the winners and losers. So not all are going to be relevant all the time. You just have to know that this is your bank of evaluation tools. Depending on what the question is, you pick whichever evaluation points you think are relevant and explain them in depth and you are rocking your exam. Lastly, where do you need to evaluate? Where should you evaluate? Well, in your big questions, your big discuss, assess, evaluate questions, evaluate throughout, throughout. All examiners are looking for consistent evaluation throughout the essay. The best economists do that. You make your points, you're looking to evaluate all the time throughout. You see the link above me. Watch this video where I go through how to write a solid point in economics or a solid paragraph in economics. And you see how to intertwine evaluation throughout all the key points you're looking to make. So throughout, but crucially, in your judgment. Your judgment is where you answer the question explicitly. But again, nothing is ever certain. You must give balance in your judgment. And that's where evaluation in your judgment is so important. Again, watch my video on how to make a solid judgment and where evaluation features for you to understand that. But throughout your essay and in your judgment is where evaluation must feature. Last thing from me, guys. Examiners know that this is a difficult skill. They know that there are lots of different ways of evaluating depending on what question comes up. So, if you give this a go and you do it relatively well, boy, you're going to score seriously good marks. If you nail it, you're looking at the, the top marks, full marks. But even doing it to a decent level, you're going to score seriously good marks. So hopefully this video clarifies a lot for you. You've written all this down, you feel a bit more confident. Now practice. Have a go at lots of questions, practice your evaluation skill and you will improve. Thanks so much for watching guys. I'll see you all next time.